Hello and welcome to another episode of web learning where knowledge is shared. In this episode I'll explain a little bit more in depth on the Blue Energy Dash One GUI and how it works with the Blue Energy in a mobile phone. If you missed any information or you haven't seen the, my previous videos, I recommend to go ahead have a quick look at them. So coming back to the Blue Energy I'm able to see it on COMPOR3. I click open and I can see that the send receive packets with the Blue Energy are correct. If we look in a little bit more detail on the set and receive packets, everything that's gray are the packets that are sent to the Blue Energy and everything that's white, those are the received packets back to the GUI. This is very important to understand this because at the later stage you'll see that this information is very important when you write your code. It is important to mention that the parameter, value, and literal are corresponding to the functions in the C code of the Blue Energy Dash 1 source code. And this I'll show in another video when I'll go through the actual source code. So what we can see is that after I open the COM port, I can see that the GUI read the local version information the Blue Energy ones sent back all the relevant information that is displayed here and then the GUI requested from the Blue Energy one the firmware details and again the Blue Energy sent all the right information. I'll clear the window so it will be more easier to see every step I'm doing. Now if you click init device again we'll use a public key the set name length is 7 and I wrote web learning but again it's only 7 characters so that's what I'm able to put in. I'll click OK. Here I have a little bit more instructions being set to the GUI in back. So the first instruction from the GUI is reset. You can see that the HTML command complete event. Then the GUI sent HAL write config data with the relevant information. Then the GUI sent HAL set power level. So this is what is the power level that we saw in the init. GUT init. So initialize. The GAP init. This is part of the initialization and got update char value and this as you can see this is where I'm setting the web learning to be displayed by the blue energy again for every command there is a command back saying it was success or unsuccess I'll clear the window we'll go to the next step advertising again all the right information is being set here I'll click OK so job started scan response data so I'm sending the actual configuration I want the blue energy to be set. I'm getting a success. ACI gap set discoverable with all the correct information and I have success. At this stage I can see that the blue energy is discoverable and I can connect. Let me repeat this step one more time. I'll clear the window. I'm connecting. Now what you can see here again is the information that I'm getting from the blue energy into the GUI that says that I have HSI LE meta event so someone is trying to connect okay and the role is slave success random device address and it managed to connect I'll clear this window now if I'll disconnect again you can see HSI disconnect complete event so this is the information I'm getting from the blue energy one when I'm connecting or disconnecting and those are the functions that will look for them when we'll write our code. Let me step a little bit more in more detail about the server and how it works. So first of all it is very important to have some understanding how the Blue Energy works. I briefly explained how the communication between the server and the client works. There's much more information to understand through different websites. I'll leave some links below. One of them is how to sign numbers for every device. This is a very important because you cannot just put any device number unless you put a random number as you should. Then there is the other fruit website that explains on Blue Energy and how it works. There are different instructions, introduction, gap and get, and further information. Coming back to our GUI, the most basic thing you have to understand is how the structure of the Blue Energy works. If I want to send data between the PC, for example, and the phone, I need to send some data or to set some packets. Before we go on, I want to first explain 
regarding services and current risks. So in the Blue Energy, we have an attribute table. The attribute table is a table that sits in the memory at the different address that you see here. Let's take, for example, a heart rate service. In the attribute table, we have a handle, unique ID, permissions, and value. Each line of the attribute table has a different address. Again, this address is specific to the attribute table and not to the memory. And then you have the service number, the permissions, and a value. So for characteristic, again, you have the next address in the attribute table, you have the unique ID, the permissions, and so on. To better understand this, I have this example. If, for example, we want to build a BLE keyboard, so the keyboard has keys, it has a battery, and it could have a temperature sensor, maybe we'll add a mouse. So this is the peripheral, so it's a BLE keyboard. The service is the keyboard itself and the mouse. So we have two services. One is the keyboard and one is the mouse. Then we have the characteristic. The characteristic itself is the typing of the keys or the battery level or the temperature. So we have a keyboard, we have keys, battery, temperature, and everything else. And then we have the descriptor. The descriptor is the actual information we're moving around. So in this case, the characteristics are keys and the descriptor are the actual levers I'm pushing. If I have a battery measurement, then I have the actual value of the battery. So how much the battery is full or not. If we have a mouse, so it's the same thing. We have a mouse, we have the movement, and we have the information. The characteristic, we can have another descriptor. For example, if we have a mouse and then we have a temperature sensor, this could be the actual temperature sensor value. The descriptor, the last descriptor, will hold the information about that temperature. It could be either if it's in Celsius or in Fahrenheit or in a percentage. So we have the value and what this value corresponds to. So we can have another descriptor to the characteristic. So understanding this, let's go back to the GUI and let's see what we can do with this. So coming back to our GUI, let's init the device, clear, service management. And in the service management, we can see the service and the, and the characteristics and everything. So the service management immediately opened few attributes as a default. So I have the generic attribute service that sits at address one of the attribute table. So we have a service change and client characteristic configuration. Then we have generic access service. So the generic access service, you can see it's sitting at zero, at zero 05. So we have, if you remember the table, it has four columns. One, two, three is the data and four. So again, five, six, seven is the data and eight. And we're back at A and so on. So if we want to add another service, in this example, I'll do a chat example. I'll click on new on the service management. Here, I'll give it the name chat. When you're doing your own software of a BLE, you have to use 128-bit hexa because the 16-bit are reserved numbers and only if you're in the BLE consortium, you can get those numbers. If you're just doing your own software, then you need to use 128-bit any number. For example, I'll take 12. So this is my service. Under the service, I need to do a characteristics. So I'm clicking add. This is the characteristic. And then the characteristic name, I'll give it a char. This characteristics, I want to be able to read, write, and be notified. Okay. If you hover, you can understand what each option gives you. Now, as I said before, we can have another characteristic here. For example, if the 
if we're doing a mouse with a temperature sensor that's my service and adding characteristic that's actual temperatures that I'm reading or sending and I can have another one the descriptor and here for example I have the value of temp okay but I'm only sending back and forth a char so I don't need this here I click OK so we can see that we have a characteristic we can have another characteristic if we want to like the BLE keyboard that I can have characteristic to be sent I can have the battery and so on I click cancel and I'll click OK here so now we can see that we have the service chat we'll have the information char and we'll have the actual characteristic that we're going to send at this point I can click save view and this will save me the services so I can load them the next time and I will not need to rewrite them over again to add the service I click on the service and I click right to attribute table are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And then what we can see is that the service I wrote got the handle C in my attribute table. The characteristic is in D. The information is at E, where we don't see it here. And the client characteristic configuration, that's in F. So I'll click close. And if we go back, so as you can see now, after clicking OK on the service management, we have all the commands that we need to do in order to set it correctly. So we have got read handle, read handle value, read handle value, and those are all the values that we've set in the software. And for the services that we added, so we have got add service it's a 128-bit unique ID and then we have the unique ID that I've added and then we have service type primary and we have max attribute records and then we get the reply back from the from the blue energy one so here we have the got add char so we can see that the GUI sent to the blue energy to put the service handle in C and the Blue Energy told the system back that it was success and the char handle will be at D. And then I sent back to the Blue Energy that the attribute handle will be at E. So this is where I'm going to put all my values. And I have success. Clear. I'll click Advertising. I'll click OK. So we can see that the scan response data was success and I'm in this cover mode. I'll click clear. Let's open the mobile phone. So as before, I can see that the Blue Energy Web is on. I can see that I got connected, that everything is working fine. I'll click clear. And here is my generic attribute, the generic access as we will see, and the custom service with the same unique ID that I gave it. We can see that it has a custom characteristic and with the unique ID that I also gave it and it has read, write and notify. If you remember again in the service management I've, I gave it in the characteristic I read, write and notify. So how do we send information between the GUI and the computer to the BLE? So first of all we we'll send to the computer and that's very easy. I click write, I'll put a character and I'll click OK. And immediately you can see in the GUI that I received the character. If we look, we have the attribute data length of 1 and the attribute data of hex 41. Now if we change it to ASCII, we can see it's an A. So we get an event, we admit it, we get the information. If we do it again, clear, right. This time I'll do an F, click OK, and immediately we can see it's an F. If I'll try to write more than one character, this will not work because in the service management, when we made the characteristic, 
we had only one in the value length. Now, if we want to send to the mobile phone the information, then we want to go to the ACI command, deselect all, add only a GUT service. I need to send it from service handler C, characteristic handle D, and the char value, of course, it will be E. But this is the actual information I'm sending. So at this stage, I'll do hex 41. I click enter. And I'll click send. So now I've sent something, a capital A, and the event is complete. If we go back to the mobile phone, we'll see that nothing was changed. Uh, because it's still A, let me change it to something else so you better see it. Let's change it to, let's say, um, D. And I'll click Send. Again, I have success. But on the mobile phone, I'm not seeing anything. In order to see the, the information, I'll have to click Read. And now you can see that I have a D. Now, if you want your application to see the actual char character without clicking over and over again the refresh, what we need to do is click on application, and this is the N. So now that I've clicked N, I have a new event, attribute modify event, and that means that tells the GUI in the Blue Energy One that the mobile phone has entered the notification sequence and now anything that comes up will be notified immediately in the mobile phone and let me show you this so this is the mobile phone now I'll change the character to P and I'll do clear list and look at this if I click send immediately pops up and here I have the character value P and I have a complete event because I sent it and I got the reply that it received on a mobile phone and it was updated. So again, I'll change the character to 1, enter, if I click send, and immediately I see number 1. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to get more notification when I upload new videos. Thank you.